Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at how to solve a system involving two variable first degree inequalities. So, in your notebook, please mark down today's subtitle, which is Solving Systems of Two Variable First Degree Inequalities. In order to understand this video, you should already have knowledge of how to solve a single two variable first degree inequality. If not, please view my video on how to do such an inequality from my collection. If you have that knowledge, then you're ready to go. Because the first step in solving a system involving two variable first degree inequalities is to solve each of the inequalities individually. Once that's been accomplished, the system is basically solved because the only thing you really need to look for is where the individual shaded regions intersect each other. In other words, you're looking for the common shaded region among both of the inequalities. So, let's take a look at an example of such a system. Suppose I asked you to solve the system involving the following inequalities. 3x minus 2y is bigger than 12 and x plus 5y is smaller than or equal to 8. So the first thing we need to do is solve each of the inequalities individually. Might as well start with the first one. Let's solve the 3x minus 2y bigger than 12. So first things first, I'm going to need to draw the graph. And in order to draw the graph, I'm going to need two points. So to get those two points, I'm going to completely randomly plug in an x and or a y. So let's start by plugging in, how about when x is 0? So let's see what happens. So we have 3 times 0 minus 2y is equal to 12. Therefore, minus 2y is equal to 12. And y is equal to negative 6. So, our first point will be located at the coordinate 0 and minus 6. Next, let's get a second point. How about, completely randomly, I plug in when y is equal to 0. Let's see what happens. That will give me 3x minus 2 times 0 equals to 12. Simplifying gives me 3x is equal to 12, therefore x is equal to 4. So our second point that we may use is located at 4 and 0. And finally, let's pick a test point so that we can verify our inequality and determine the appropriate shaded region. So the point 0, 0 is actually not directly on this line. Therefore, it makes it a nice convenient point to use. But no matter which point you decide to use, please tell me. So, I'm going to test 0, 0. Let's see what happens. So we get 3 times 0 minus 2 times 0. Will that actually be bigger than 12? So simplifying, we get 0 bigger than 12. And in fact, right away, you can see that that creates a false statement. With that first inequality out of the way, before we graph it, though, let's might as well do the legwork involved for solving the second inequality. So let's solve x plus 5y smaller than or equal to 8. So again, I'm going to need two random points in order to draw that line. So let's try plugging in x equals to completely randomly. How about 3? You'll see right away why I pick 3. It's because it will give me a nice, clean y value. So we get 3 plus 5y is equal to 8. Therefore, 5y is equal to 5, and y is equal to 1. So the first point that we have available to us is located at 3 and 1. Let's get a second point. How about if I plug in y equals to 0? Let's see what happens. 
So we get x plus 5 times 0 is equal to 8. And therefore, x is equal to 8. So it gives us a second point located at 8 and 0. And finally, let's do our test point. Again, 0, 0 does not lie directly on this line, so that makes it a nice convenient point. Keep in mind that no matter which point you choose to use, please tell me. So I'm going to test 0, 0. Let's see what happens. So we have 0 plus 5 times 0. Will that actually be less than or equal to 8? So we get 0 less than or equal to 8. And sure enough, that produces a true statement. The last thing left to do is to draw the solution for both of these inequalities onto the same grid. In order to fit both solutions comfortably, you'll need to prepare a grid that's about this size. So go ahead, pause the video, and prepare your grid now. Alright, with your grid ready to go, let's put down both solutions, starting with the first inequality, the 3x minus 2y bigger than 12. I'll be doing that entirely in green. So, let's put down our random points. The first point we found was located at 0 and minus 6. The second point is located at 4 and 0. And the line that connects those two points should be a dotted line. And, thanks to our test point of 0, 0, we determined that the appropriate shaded region for this inequality is the region that does not contain 0, 0. So, once you shade it properly, it should look something like this. Next, let's draw the solution that represents our second inequality. So, the random points that we found were located at the following coordinates. The first one is a 3 and 1. And the second one was located at 8 and 0. And as you can see, I'll be doing this solution completely in red. And the line that connects these two points should be a solid one. And thanks to our test point of 0, 0, we determined previously that the shaded region should be the region that contains 0, 0. Once you've shaded that region properly, your graph should finally look like the following you should immediately see the solution to our system. We are looking for the shaded region which is common to both of the solutions of each of the inequalities. If you look carefully in this particular example, it's this entire region right here where the green overlaps the red. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to solving a system involving two variable first degree inequalities.